<laughs> Hi, my loves. What are you doing? Welcome back, kind family. Oh my God, look at the little cherry pumpkins. So cute. This is where we're starting out today. So my nails were entirely obliviated from work. I am a machine technician, if you do not know. Hi, my name is Sierra. I am the owner of Criminal Claws. I run this channel, um, our social medias and stuff like that. So my nails get obliviated from work though. I love working with my hands. I like, you know, construction, mechanics. I like everything, DIY projects. I love painting. So my hands take a huge hit, especially from work. Um, they are all scratched up, burned up, scraped up, sore, swollen. So I hope you guys can look past my hands. I did clean up my nails as much as I could before I applied our full cover, or not full cover, our stiletto tips. Now, these actually don't have a well in them. These are no well tip. So they're very flexible. If you have flat nail beds, these are great for flat nail beds. Um, if you have wide nail beds, these are great for wide nail beds. If you have problems with getting your tips to fit, try a no well tip. They're really great. And then we're going in. These were stiletto, but we cut them halfway. Stiletto tips are seriously great if you want coffin almond, oval, you know, squoval, almondetto, stiletto. <laughs> They're really versatile pretty much. If you get you a set of stiletto long tips or extra long stiletto tips, you can really do a lot, a lot of different shapes with stiletto tips. So when you're filing something into a rounded shape that is already curved, right? Because tips are curved like this. They are like a half of a circle um, they they curve to your natural nail that means that the sides are facing down the sides of your tip are facing the ground when you put your hand out so you want to go from underneath and file at a 45 degree angle coming up and under the tip if that makes sense please don't hold your file straight up and down coming straight at the sides of the nail it will cause a misshapen nail it, it just doesn't seem to be as easy. You could get that shape, but you're going to work a lot harder at it. If you go at a 45 degree angle, lining your file up with the side of your natural nail where it ends and the end of the tip. If you put those two touching the file and come at it at a 45 degree angle, slowly that tip will come up at a rounded shape. I promise you, if you hold your file touching the very side of your natural nail and the side of the tip and just slowly file it will come up at a at a nice curve you can do an oval like this you can do stiletto like this depending on what style of stiletto you want or you can do almond like this but it's a really great way to bring up those edges and make them nice and rounded without making taking too much off and making them really wonky shaped. Your shaping can get really wonky if you don't do this correctly. But make sure that you're going at both sides evenly. Do a little bit on one side and then do a little bit on the other. Watch what you're doing. And I always take my file and hold it up the center of my nail just to make sure that I'm keeping that center line. I don't want my nails to curve off to one side more than the other. And sometimes when you're filing, you can kind of start to get blurry eyed or you're concentrating too hard and you really can lose sight of where that center line is. So just use your file and keep putting it up that center. Make sure you're keeping track of where that is. Then we go in dusting everything off. We're gonna go. We're gonna go in and prep our nails. So I am gonna push back my cuticles. I did clean up <clears throat> when I did the video of what my nails looked like after work. I cleaned up my nails like a day before I did this video, and all I really did was just buff down the gel polish and go in and scrape around my cuticles, getting all the ink and oils out and making sure that I clean them up with alcohol and acetone. So I didn't do a full prep and that's where this is coming in at. We're pushing back the cuticles. I'm going to do a full prep of my nail. Now I'm going to do a very light prep because my nails do still have some product on them. And I just really want to buff them and get them ready for the transition to acrylic. So we're going in and the 
tip that's applied to my natural nail is raised up away from my natural nail. And what I'm doing is I'm just blending that tip. It makes it easier to not only apply acrylic to your nail, but also when you go to file the acrylic back down, you don't want to file into those wings on the side. Because these are not super long nails, I'm not trying to have them super thick. And I will bring in the sides when I go to file my acrylic into shape. I file in my sidewalls like crazy because my nails, my hands are big. And I really like to make my nails look dainty without taking away the apex. And how I do that is I bring in my sidewalls like crazy. That's a seriously great trick if you have wide nail beds to bring in your sidewalls as much as possible. It really will help make your nails look daintier and thinner. Now, buffing the surface of the tip is unnecessary. You don't have to do this, especially when you're using acrylic. It will adhere to that tip perfectly. But honestly, I like to thin my tip out. I like to make it a little bit thin, thinner and flimsier so that, especially when I'm doing short nails, if I'm doing shorter nails, I like to keep them super thin. There's not as much of a need for a thick apex. There's not as much of a need for acrylic on the tip. You know, I really like to keep these thin. So I start that thinning process from the very beginning. I start to thin out the actual tip. That's why I blend it into my natural nail. And I actually take a little thin layer off the top of that tip. By the time I'm done thinning out my tip, it's pretty flimsy. I wouldn't say as flimsy as saran wrap, but I would say as flimsy as paper. Um, but that's my personal choice. You do not have to do that if you do not want to. Here we're going in and we are going around the cuticle area and buffing, making sure that everywhere that I don't have product that grew out, all the natural nail that was exposed, I am buffing it and getting it ready for our prep and prime products. So again, we're going in and we are cleansing our nails, getting all that dust off. I use alcohol. Do not use acetone once you've applied a plastic tip. If you use acetone you will melt your tip it will eat at your plastic tip so i go in with 100 percent or 90 percent isopropyl alcohol and cleanse my nail beds and the tip getting it free of dust now here we're going to go in with our dehydrator with which honestly let me be honest if you already went in with 100 percent alcohol and you was cleansing your nail beds throughout this entire process look at how white and chalky my nails already are dehydrator is not necessary if you are cleansing with alcohol and acetone throughout this process of prepping you probably do not need to use a dehydrator i just do it for the sake of keeping my technique as a whole together it's just what i'm used to doing pretty much these are the steps i'm used to taking now we are going in and only on the natural nail am i putting our primer now our primer is a non-sticky or <laughs> a sticky non-acid primer this this is um amazing for acrylics it really does help keep your acrylics lasting a lot longer and when I say that using this primer, people are unable to even pop their nails off when they want to, they really can't. So our primer is really, really good. I love a non-acid primer. Now, here is our abalone shells. If you remember, we did our toes with the pink abalone mix. Now we're going in with the purple and blue abalone mix. And we're going to use some clear acrylic to apply this with. Now... You don't have to apply with acrylic if you are doing short nails, right? If you're doing short nails and you have issues keeping your acrylic thin when you are encapsulating, you could totally use base gel to apply these abalone shells to make sure that you're keeping everything super thin. I don't tend to have an issue with keeping stuff thin because I've done it so many times. I used to have an issue with this and keeping all my encapsulation super thin so when I go to encapsulate, it isn't super thick, right? But if you are a beginner and you have issues with encapsulating nail art and, you know, you don't want to file into it so you end up having thick nails, go in with base gel and encapsulate your designs with base gel and just clear cap with the acrylic. That is totally fine. You're allowed to use a mix of base gel and acrylic. It, it, it's not an issue. It's just not. 
It never has been. It never will be. I know that people debate using base gel under acrylic, but honestly, I've done it for years and I've never had an issue. I used to protect my nails with base gel before I would use any acrylics. And I never had problems with lifting or popping. It never separated. It never had an issue. So please don't be worried about that. So we went in with very thin wet beads of clear acrylic and applied our abalonia shells inside of that. And now wherever I didn't put the abalonia shells, wherever I didn't put it, where you can still see my natural nail, I'm going in with nip slip, which is like a bubblegum sheer pinkish. It's almost like a purple hue though too sometimes. Like I don't know how to explain it. This is literally my favorite favorite ever nude acrylic my favorite i'm obsessed this is just too beautiful like i don't know why but i just i love how nude and sheer and pretty it is without being a creamy tech like that cream color texture um if you know what i'm talking about the cream nudes you know that have like a brown hue to them not brown but cream uh, this is definitely not that. It's straight up like a beautiful sheerish type pink. Purple. Pink purple. Whatever you would want to call it. I don't know how to say it, but it's beautiful. Now, filling in those spaces with the nip slip, True Nude, we are going to encapsulate this nail with our crystal clear acrylic. And oh my god, I'm obsessed with this. Now, I'm not that happy with the way the design turned out in the end. Honestly, the spiders threw it off for me. So I'm actually going to end up doing my other hand and doing an entire set redesigned. Um, I'm going to keep the, the abalone shells, but I'm going to show you guys the idea that I had. Honestly, shorter nails kind of throw me off with nail art. So I feel like that's where I kind of got mm, thrown off on my design. I loved everything but the spiders. The spiders just aren't as cohesive as I wanted them to be. So... I am going to fix it and I'm going to come back with a redesign and I hope you guys are going to be here for it because I can't wait to show you what I'm going to do. It's going to be something totally different. Now, as I encapsulate with clear acrylic, there are different ways that you can go about this. You need to make sure that you have no unsaturated white powder on your bead before you lay it down. If you are dropping crumbs of acrylic onto your nail before you lay that bead down, that bead is not correct. Let me promise you, you will have a cloudy application if you are dropping crusty acrylic onto your nail before you apply that clear bead. Like You need to make sure that the bead is fully saturated with monomer and totally workable before you apply it to your nail bed. Otherwise, your application could not be as clear as what it should be. I'm not saying that you couldn't work it out, that you could re-wet it and, you know, kind of fiddle with it. But honestly, I work clear capping super wet and that's my preference. I've done nails for a couple years now and I can do it to where the bead isn't entirely sopping wet. I can, but I don't want to. I like it better sopping wet. That's my preference. You don't have to, but honestly, I feel like it it definitely creates a clearer cap in the end. So we are going in on a ring finger with nip slip, and we are just going to do an entire nail with nip slip. And this acrylic, do you see it? Do you see how just like, I know with the lighting that it kind of washes it out a little bit and you can't honestly see the color and this like how it's almost semi sheer semi not <laughs> but man this is my favorite it's just the funnest nude it honestly is and it's skin tone um inclusive honestly i feel like this blends into all nail beds beautifully like it's just it's pretty man it's just freaking pretty all right so I do end up going in and doing a French ombre technique with the abalonia shells. So you see me using my super wet bead of acrylic. And this is a tiny wet bead. When I say that it is tiny and I'm spreading it out as thin as fingernail polish, 
honestly. That's how thin I am spreading this clear acrylic. As thin as a, a nail polish layer. And then I am just pushing those abalone shells into that. It should be enough to hold it. So make sure that you are keeping everything as thin as possible. Now, you saw me go in and add another bead of clear acrylic up to the top layer of the abalonia that I had previously applied and pulled it down. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the acrylic at where I need it to add more abalonia shells, but I'm also encapsul encapsulating the bottom half as I go. So it will help hold those in place. Now, with the abalonia shells, honestly, don't do two layers. Don't try to cover the nail completely to where you can't see through it at all because it could create thickness, but also keeping it just a thin one layer where you can kind of see through certain parts of it creates this dimension when you cap it that is really beautiful. It honestly is super beautiful. So keep it to one thin layer. Don't mind if you can see through a couple parts, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna add to the look in the end. Now I do thin cap it very, very thinly before I go in with the nip slip and ombre it down. Only because I don't want it being a jagged mess that I'm trying to ombre over. So I'm honestly just doing a super thin clear cap. This is really thin. There's still texture. It's still kind of lumpy and bumpy. Remember, I said that I work super wet. So this looks like it's more acrylic than what it is. Honestly, it's not a lot of acrylic. It's just very wet beads. And I'm using very tiny wet beads to just pull down over that abalonia shell just to make sure that it isn't jagged. Now it's still textured, but it's good enough now that I feel comfortable ombre over it and not creating a thick mess. Now you can see that ombre starting to take shape. And the issue with this nip slip is that it, since it is a semi-transparent acrylic, going over such a dark nail art, like it is a little bit of an issue. You're not gonna get this great blend just because the black and purple and blue, it's kind of hard to um, cover that with the nip slip. So, um, but I'm happy with it. To be honest, I knew that I was going to be doing nail art on the tip of this nail. Like everything was planned out for this set. So I was okay with the blend not being perfect. I knew that I was going to be covering a lot of it up with nail art. So no worries. Now, again, we are going to cap the end, um, capping that blend itself and making sure that we go in with tiny little super wet beads, applying them where I know that I need them, constantly looking at my nail from the sides, from the top, from the front, head on, making sure that I'm just paying attention to where I'm placing my beads. Do not blindly place your beads just because you feel like it needs more thickness. Your nail never needs more thickness. It needs more structure. And structure comes when you pay attention to where you are applying your beads and concentrating the acrylic where it's truly needed. Now the ring finger is going to be a full nail of nip slip so I'm not showing that because we did that on the ring finger. So the pointer finger is a full nail nip slip and I just cut it out. Now here we're going in with a super thin bead of clear acrylic at our cuticle area and applying the abalonia shells again. Now remember please don't keep this as thin as possible. I was not worried about having little pieces like little gaps in the shells. Honestly, I just wanted them up there so they were visible to people. I was not worried about this being perfect. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and that is called a cuticle cuff. And I'm gonna apply nip slip to the rest of the nail and I'm not really worried about it being this perfect ombre or anything like that. I just want them to be cohesive between the nip slip and the abalone shells. And I want everything to be visible with the shells. So all it is is a cuticle cuff. You don't have to get particular about this. It's going to be pretty no matter what. Um, I made sure that when I applied the shells that I kept them in a half circle or a half moon so that it rounded around the cuticle area and really did add that look of sleekness. When you do a cuticle cuff, make sure that you round it around your cuticle area. Don't keep it like a square. It's going to make it look kind of crazy. Make sure that you keep that cuticle area shape going. You want it to look sleek. 
And then, of course, here we are adding the nip slip and we are going to clear cap. But let's get to the art. All right. So first, we're going to be going in with our gel and everything is just filed right now. I have not top coated, matte coated anything. Everything is just filed into shape. Look at how pretty this set is just filed into shape. I'm seriously obsessed with this set. I'm just annoyed that the spiders didn't turn out as cute as I wanted them to. I'm happy with the spiders themselves. They just don't seem to match this set. So we are going in with our diamond gem glue. And this is a super thick, non-tacky gel. So you can apply this gel and it's just like a diamond hard top coat, pretty much. It does not dry sticky. It dries hard and with a hard finish. This is a non-tack cure gel. So it's really, really great. It's super thick and super durable. So what I did was I applied beads and applied my stones into those beads, cured it. And now I'm drawing little spider legs. See, they're cute little spiders. They kind of remind me of ants. I wish I wouldn't have done them in such dark colors. I wish kind of that I would have done just one big spider in a beautiful like crystal placement style mm, this is kind of basic I did this a couple years ago and I'm kind of disappointed in myself for not you know trying something new and doing something a little bit more elaborate just having two little spiders which honestly putting two together made it even more reminiscent of ants because I don't think spiders stick together. I think ants do. So I'm not, I'm not happy with this. This is the only part that I'm not happy with, but because of this, because of this, I'm scrapping the whole set. We are just going to go back. I'm going to do another set on my other hand, and we are just going to do a full cute ass set for Halloween. I'm going to redesign and I'm going to show you guys just the art. So I'm just going to build out my right hand off camera since you guys already saw the build. And then I'm going to go in and just record the art for all of it. And I cannot wait because this art is about to be bomb AF. Like you guys, oh my God. So here we're going in with that diamond bling gel. And I am actually using it to top coat my nail and hard. Like, okay, so it's just like as if you would use a top gel, right? A non-sticky top gel. That's what this is doing. But oh my God, I wore these to work for three days in a row and I had no scratches. This shit is the truth. Like, honestly, I cannot wait until we open up shop and I get to start promoting this gel. This gel is bomb. I've never had a top coat like this. Honestly, it is super shiny and it stays shiny for days. You guys saw what my natural nails looked like, right? My hands go through a gauntlet at work. And when I say that this, this gel, this diamond bling gel, oh my God, it really did hold the test of time at work. I, I was super excited. So now what we're going to do is, since I already top coated the nail, we're going to go in and build out a French, French style uh, spider web. Now, the reason that I pre-top coated the nail is because I want the spider whip to be kind of like a 3D style web, right? I want it to be raised up off the nail. I don't want to top coat everything all at once and kill that definition of the spider web. So I top coated the nail and now we're just going in with some black gel paints and we are creating a nice little web at the end in a French style, right? And then... Once we're done, we're grabbing our purple chrome powder and we are going to cure the black gel polish or gel paints. We cured that for 60 seconds and now I am rubbing into the cured gel paint our purple chrome pigment. Now, make sure when you are rubbing this pigment in that you rub vigorously. You don't want it to look like litter. You want it to look chrome. So make sure that you rub and rub and rub and rub, rub it up, up, right? Okay. And since we already top coated the nail with the non-stick top coat, we're able to dust off the pigment, the excess pigments without it attaching itself to the, the rest of the nail, right? 
So then we go in and we use that bling gel to apply a purple stone into the center. And I actually end up going over all of that purple chrome with the bling gel. So I just take that liner brush and I line out every bit of the spider web, making sure that I cover all the spider web with that bling gel, but just going over the spider web and the chrome. That's it. I use my liner brush just to you know, go back in and redo that spider web to make sure none of that chrome comes off. And then we are matte top coating the spider nail. And I go in with a nice amount of matte top coat, apply it to all the basic areas. And then I go in with my liner brush and I make sure that I bring that matte top coat up to our stones. I want to make sure that the stones, like all that bling gel that shows so shiny that our bling our diamond bling gel is super shiny. So I wanted to make sure that none of that shine really showed. And then I go in and matte top coat, not only the pointer finger, but I matte top coated the, or no, I didn't, I'm a liar. Uh, just the pointer finger. I matte top coated the pointer finger, cured that, and now we are going in with our nail art. So just draw out two little beans pretty much, right? You just, two little black beans but I didn't attach mine. I wanted them to look separated. So I drew one full bean, and then next to that, I left a little gap in between, and I drew like, you know, two thirds of the other bean. And this is gonna be our purple pumpkins, our carved Halloween pumpkins slash cherries, right? So we're going in with that black gel paint again, and we are doing the two little beans and making sure that you don't attach them. You want them to be kind of side by side because these are small nails. You have to work with what you got. And um, we are making sure that we fill in all those little beans, cure it 60 seconds, and rub in your purple chrome again. Make sure you rub really vigorously and then dust off your excess, and we are going to go in and do what we did with the spider web. We are going to bling gel all the chrome pigment so that it cannot come off. We can do anything else in art that we want to these nails and we don't have to worry about scratching or messing up this design that we have here. So all I'm doing, and this is just the first layer, we're actually gonna go in and put white details as far as like the carved eyes and the mouth go. We're gonna do those in white gel paint. So I wanna be able to do those details without disturbing that purple chrome. So I am top coating the purple chrome. You could do this in regular top coat if you want. If you don't have a bling gel that's super thick and stays put, as long as you have your nail matte top coated your top gel if you use just a top coat to encapsulate that chrome pigment, it shouldn't flood onto any other area as long as you keep it on top of that chrome. So now we are going in and we are just doing, look at how close I had to get, you can see my hair. Um, we are just doing the tiny little, you know, outlines of what it looks like to have like a tiny little carved pumpkin. And then we are gonna cure that and we are gonna actually go back over with another thin coat of bling gel because we want everything to look kind of raised up. Like I said, I wanted that spider web to look like it had definition and texture. I wanted it to look a little raised. And then the same with our little cherry pumpkins. I wanted them to be just a little bit raised up off of the nail. Not a lot, so it looks like a kawaii charm, but enough that you can tell that they're there and they are a design that's raised up. Now we're going in and we are doing the stalk of these cherries. So we just draw up the lines and meet them together at the top with two little leaves. I don't keep the leaves with a little design. I just fill them in with the black gel paint and then we go ahead and cure and we're gonna use green crumb this time. Now, I'm happy with the way this turned out. Please don't, don't think that I'm not happy with the way that these turned out but I kind of wish I would have made the pumpkins bigger. Kind of not liking how small they are. I'm so used to having such long nails and such a bigger area to have bigger designs. Um, I'm not in love with such a small, 
picture of a pumpkin, I guess. I wish I would have done them a little bit bigger. Honestly, I could have figured it out. I really could have. But this is where we're at with this. And I still love these little cherry pumpkins. I really do. So this is the part where I went in with the bling gel and encapsulated everything again. And I cured that. And then I just went into that cured black gel paint with the green and I'm going to go over that green like I did the spider web and like I did the pumpkins I'm going to go over that green with our bling gel again and again you could use a regular non-wipe top coat that's fine um, as long as you have the underneath matte painted if it's not matte painted you can almost guarantee that if you go in with a top gel a non-wipe top coat and try to encapsulate the chrome it's probably going to flood the areas around it. So here is our design. I hope you guys love this. I really did love it. Everything's super cute, super, super fun, super spooky. You guys have a great day and I'll see you back with the redesign of this set. Love you. Bye.